I tried Wookiee meat. It was chewy. Today, I'm going to recap a 2023 action drama film called Bountica, Queen of War. In 60 AD, the Roman Empire had conquered most of Europe, except for Britannia, which remained defiant. On the island of Mona, the Roman army arrived to eliminate 300 Druids, executing them relentlessly. Despite facing death, the Druids continued to believe in the legend of a warrior goddess who would one day rescue them from the Romans, praying fervently in their final moments. Back in Rome, Commander Paulinus relayed the details of this massacre to King Nero, discussing the Druids' belief in a warrior goddess. Nero, concerned about the possibility of a Druidic savior, issued an order prohibiting women from holding positions of authority. Meanwhile, in Britannia, the Asini tribe lived peacefully under King Prasutagus and his queen, the proud parents of two daughters. One day, the warrior Kia Run informed Prasutagus about Rome's new procurator, Cavus, who was not fond of Britannia. While the men discussed this, the queen took her daughters to language lessons and a beauty session, followed by a visit to the market. There, the girls were shocked to see men crucified, initially thought by the queen to be criminals, but her maid clarified they were Christians executed for their faith. Undeterred, the queen continued to the market with her daughters. There, they encountered Trinovant warriors drinking. Spotting the queen, Cartmanda knelt, addressing her as Bautica, echoing the name of the warrior goddess. This action prompted the other warriors to kneel, the stall owner, overhearing the maid explain the legend to the girls, objected in Rome's name and attempted to seize the queen. Carmanda swiftly intervened, injuring the man and then beheading him, leading everyone to flee before Roman guards arrived. After some time, Prasutagus shares that he had to negotiate with the centurions to clear his wife's name. For about a year, the queen is banned from visiting the market and has to send servants for her needs. Curious, the queen asks why the Trinovant warriors thought of her as a goddess, and Prasutagus suggests it might be due to her ancestral heritage. In the afternoon, the queen and her daughters play with training swords, though it's obvious they lack real training. Prasutagus joins in, and they notice Kia Run, who's been gloomy since losing his family in the war. As the queen playfully fences with her husband, Prasutagus muses that her ancestral traits are more pronounced than he realized. Acknowledging her heritage, Prasutagus decides to give her a cherished gift, the Baudica sword, an ancient weapon crafted with lost magic and safeguarded by the druids for generations, its hue shifting in the light of the fire. The following day, the Roman procurator Catus visits the Asini, forcing Prasutagus to show submission. During a dinner, the locals feign honor at Catus' visit, despite feeling uneasy about his condescending remarks and his interest in their fort, hinting at his desire to claim it. Prasutagus then instructs his men to behave impeccably, as Catus could use any minor error as a pretext to destroy their village. He asks Kia Run to gather various outlaws and troublemakers to present to Caddis, hoping to convey the perils of the land and dissuade him from settling there. Though Kia Run complies, he dislikes the plan. Later, Prasutagus and his men leave to capture the bandits for Caddis. When they return after several days, Kia Run brings devastating news to the queen. Prasutagus has fallen in a surprise attack during the skirmish. Distraught, the queen breaks down angrily reproaching the men for failing to protect their king. The following day, with no male successors, the Asini tribe proclaims her their new queen leader and presents her with the royal torque, a symbol of her status. Kia Run seems displeased with this development. However, the ceremony is abruptly halted by Catus and his soldiers. Cavus declares that the Roman Empire does not recognize female leaders and views the tribute they had sent as a bribe. As punishment, he announces the seizure of her lands and severe consequences for her and her daughters. He also discloses that Kia Run betrayed Prasutagus' location, leading to his ambush. The soldiers then forcefully separate the queen from her daughters, discarding her torque, and strip her before tying her to a tree, where she is brutally whipped. The tribe is forced to watch helplessly, with any dissenters restrained by the soldiers. Following the beating, they brand her face with the initials of Nero, a practice typically reserved for slaves. That evening, Cardmanda and the Trinovant warriors stealthily infiltrate the Roman camp, 
silently eliminating several guards. They locate and rescue the queen, evading detection by crossing a river and reaching the Trinovant tribe, where they tend to her injuries. As she recuperates amidst feverish delirium, fixated on her daughters, Carnamanda informs her that she now must consider the Trinovant tribe her family. However, to her relief, her daughters soon arrive at the tent, reuniting with her. Cardmanda also provides her with a set of teeth taken from a centurion, emphasizing the necessity of a warrior's bite. Days later, as her health improves, the queen steps out to find her daughters being trained in combat by the warriors. She requests a pause to spend time together, learning that Cardmanda too had lost children to Roman brutality. The girls reveal that the Trinovant tribe sees the mark from Catus as a symbol of her leadership, urging her to unite the tribes against Rome. They stress that she has no choice but to embrace this destiny. Subsequently, the queen attempts to train with a training dummy, but her techniques are unrefined. Fortunately, one of the warriors assists her, teaching her the correct way to strike. Their training is interrupted when Cardmanda arrives with the bowed to sword, having taken it back after killing a soldier to whom Cadus had given it. The queen is deeply moved by this act, but her instructor remarks that bronze is not an ideal material for a sword. This moment is followed by the arrival of Wolfgar and his tribe, who come to see the queen. Wolfgar, unimpressed by her inexperience and lack of proper armor, suggests he should lead instead. He mocks her sword and breaks it in half, tossing it into the river. The queen dives into the water to retrieve it, alarming the warriors due to the river's dangerous currents. Miraculously, she emerges with the sword, now mysteriously repaired, earning the awe of everyone. Wolfgar then declares his and his men support for her. In the evening, the warriors return the royal torque to the queen and conduct a ceremony, formally recognizing Boundica as the leader of the United Tribes. In her moving speech, she speaks of reclaiming their freedom and proposes ambushing Caddis' convoy in two days. Wolfgar expresses doubt, citing the strength of Caddis' army and the risk of defeat. However, Boundica's display of making her sword levitate and return to her hand is seen as a powerful omen. When Boundica prepares to confront the enemy alone in the forest, Wolfgar and his warriors join her, deciding to support her cause. They rally behind her, chanting her name, ready to fight alongside her. In two days, Kia Run, now a member of the Roman army, leads a convoy through the forest. They encounter Boudica standing alone on the road. She requests a meeting with Cardus. Initially, Kia Run disregards her, but she insists, threatening violence, prompting him to fetch his commander. When Cardus arrives, he fails to recognize Boudica. Seizing the opportunity, she asserts her status as queen, summons her sword, and swiftly kills Cardus. This action triggers an ambush by the tribe's warriors, who quickly encircle the Romans. A fierce battle ensues, with the Romans attempting to defend themselves or escape. However, Baudica's forces are relentless, eliminating every Roman they encounter. Baudica herself, despite occasional stumbles or losing her weapon, continues fighting fiercely until no Romans remain, their heads displayed on spikes. After the battle, the tribe loots the bodies, collecting gold and valuables. Kia Run is captured while attempting to flee and brought before Baudeca. Enraged by his betrayal, she repeatedly stamps him. Wolfgar intervenes, calming her down, and she decides they should head for Kamulovs. Wolfgar agrees, but suggests they seek the Druid Council's blessing first. That evening, the druids grant their blessing, symbolized by Baudica and Wolfgar drinking from Carta's skull, following tradition. Later, Wolfgar attempts to woo Baudica, despite already having two wives, but she rejects him, remaining loyal to her late husband, King Prasutagus. Left alone, Baudica is approached by another druid who discusses life's meaning with her. The druid reveals that her daughters have died, a reality Baudica struggles to accept. Boundica reflects on her family's past, as the druid tells her that her daughter's spirits will forever be with her. The druid also reveals that Boundica's own life will soon end, but not before she leads her army once more. Distressed by these truths, Boundica exits the shack to confirm with Wolfgar if he can see her daughters. He acknowledges they are figments of her imagination, leading Boundica to collapse from emotional strain. 
When she regains consciousness in a bed, Bautica is accompanied by the apparitions of her daughters. Understanding they are not real, she still cherishes their presence and vows they will be together again soon. A few days later, Bautica and her forces reach Camulos, a town turned into a retirement community for elderly Roman soldiers after the locals were slaughtered. The town falls easily to Bautica's army, resulting in a brutal massacre of the aged Romans, with heads gruesomely severed. The conquest is swift, and after looting, they burn the settlement, with Bautica declaring this is just the beginning. Back at their camp, Bautica observes the warrior celebrating unusually. Wolfgar explains they are marking their faces like hers as a tribute. Bautica is initially upset, associating the mark with enslavement, but Wolfgar points out they are redefining its meaning, being illiterate. In Cambridge Forest, they ambush another Roman convoy, mercilessly killing many soldiers. Bautica's forces grow more skilled and savage with each battle, decapitating enemies without hesitation. Later in London, they launch a night attack on the harbor, setting fire to Roman ships. Despite the Romans' efforts to defend, they are overwhelmed by the fierce tribesmen. Bautica takes particular satisfaction in beheading the Roman captain, reveling in the triumph. In Rome, chaos ensues as riots engulf the city and buildings are set ablaze. The populace, frustrated by the costly war, clamors for victory. Paulinus attempts to save Emperor Nero. But Nero, feeling abandoned by Rome and considering himself a musician rather than a warrior, chooses to end his own life. Paulinus, deeply affected by Nero's death, vows to achieve the victory Rome demands, informing his troops of their imminent departure. Word of Nero's death and Paulinus' voyage soon reaches Britannia, causing concern among the tribes. Wolfgar discusses with Bautica the formidable nature of the king's army, suggesting a strategic retreat to regroup with additional forces from the north in the spring. Despite Wolfgar's advice, Bautica is adamant about continuing the fight, driven by the spirits of her daughters and her refusal to align with Wolfgar for political gains. Unable to reconcile their strategies, Wolfgar departs with his men, leaving Bautica with only the Trinovant tribe. The next day, as they prepare for battle, they learn that Paulinus is heading to Watling Street. Bautica, eager for confrontation, rallies her tribe with an impassioned speech and a symbolic gesture to the land, promising to reclaim their freedom. However, as they rush towards the road, the Roman soldiers unexpectedly allow them to pass, revealing Paulinus' strategic setup for an ambush. The Romans, equipped with archers, launch a devastating attack. In desperation, Bautica attempts to use her carriage for cover, but it proves futile as her warriors fall rapidly. Facing the grim reality, her daughters inform her that her time has come. Bautica, refusing to surrender, prepares to fight valiantly. Suddenly, screams from the forest signal, Wolfgar's return with reinforcements, catching the Romans off guard. Despite their surprise attack and using the Romans' crossbows against them, the Romans' superior numbers eventually overpower them, leading to Wolfgar and Cartmanda's demise in the battle. Witnessing these losses, Baudica is engulfed by rage and proceeds to eliminate as many Romans as possible. However, her daughter's spirits intervene, reminding her that the time has come to join her family in the afterlife. In the midst of this emotional moment, Baudica is struck by an arrow. Seizing this opportunity, the Romans encircle her and fatally wound her with multiple stabs. As Bautica succumbs to her injuries, her thoughts linger on her family. In her final moments, she envisions her spirit reuniting with her loved ones in the afterlife. Fast forward to modern times, a statue commemorating Bautica and her daughter stands in London, serving as a lasting tribute to their legacy. If you enjoyed this video, don't be shy to hit the like button, and if you disliked it, hit the dislike button twice, just to be sure. It would be best if you watched the whole movie. Thank you very much for watching. Please subscribe for more videos like this.